I think his biggest triumph this season is convincing the United fans that he's done a good job because the fact is he hasn't been good enough. Hello, it's Ben here, and in this video, I'm going to be grading each of the top six Premier League managers for 2016-17. So we'll go in reverse order. We'll start with Jose Mourinho, the Manchester United manager who was appointed last summer. Now, obviously, had a diabolical time at Chelsea after winning the title with them in 2015. But his appointment at United was still received well by United supporters, and he repaid them straight away with a win in the Community Shield. And the league campaign got off to a good start too, with three wins in the first three games. And people started to talk about them as a title contender. Then they lost at home to Manchester City, and they lost at Watford. And then it was a 4 0 defeat at Chelsea, uh, at the hands of Antonio Conte's men, that marked the start of an unbelievable unbeaten run if you're a United fan. It was a run that seemed to go on forever, I think 25 games. Dropped a lot of points in these games. It was by no means a convincing unbeaten run. A lot of the games were 0 0s at home, 1 0s, a lot of 1 0s at Old Trafford, which fans were frustrated about. So Mourinho, as far as the league concerned, I think he should be very disappointed to finish sixth. Uh, behind the likes of Liverpool and Tottenham who hadn't spent anywhere near as much money that's just not good enough for Manchester United. If he doesn't start to push for a title this season then questions do need to be asked. Even though he's won two trophies, United fans will tell you it's three, but two proper trophies in the League Cup and Europa League. I don't think that his first six season can be a unanimous success as far as uh, the fans are concerned. I think his biggest triumph this season is convincing the United fans that he's done a good job because the fact is he hasn't been good enough. He's finished sixth in the Premier League with that squad, with that expenditure, with Paul Pogba, with Zlatan Ibrahimovic to finish sixth especially behind the Liverpool squad with so many injuries and for them to finish in Champions League, for Arsenal to finish above Manchester United with the problems they've had with them calling for a manager to be sacked. For him to finish behind all of those sides, I don't think that's good enough for Mourinho. So for me, he gets a, a B minus and that's just because of the trophies he's brought to United, which you can't argue with, but I still think he's been disappointing. Okay, so fifth place in the Premier League this season was Arsenal and Arsene Wenger's men, still Arsene Wenger's men. It looks like it's going to continue to be Arsene Wenger's men after recent reports suggested that he has agreed a new two-year contract with the club. Much to many fans' chagrin, much to some delight, I think. Opposition fans will be more optimistic about this one than Arsenal fans in general. I've seen a lot of Arsenal fans happy with the FA Cup, happy with Arsene Wenger perhaps to stay on. That's obviously only one section of the Arsenal fans. There's a very split supporter base at the moment. But he delivered a trophy. He delivered the trophy for the third time in four seasons at Arsenal and you can't argue with that you know in the same way that Mourinho's delivered trophies at United whereas you know other clubs that finished above them in the league haven't won silverware as of late uh, Arsenal Wenger has delivered the FA Cup but the one thing that kept him in the job for so long was finishing in the top four securing that Champions League place he was a safe pair of hands in that regard he's failed to do that this season I know the points totals were higher for Arsenal and for everyone else in the top four but for Arsene Wenger to spend more money this summer than he has in previous years, Xhaka is disappointed, Mustafi after a good start never really settled in, never really was able to form that partnership with Koscielny that it looked like they were going to be able to form and you know be successful with. The start of the season they looked good Arsenal, they looked pretty solid, Giroud was scoring goals, Sanchez was class, Mesut Ozil was his usual quality self but everyone's form seems to really dip around the new year as it does every time with Arsenal and normally Wenger is able to pick them back up from the floor pretty soonish after they, they drop off but it just seems to go on and on. There was a 3-0 defeat at Palace, there were drop points at home, they put in a terrible performance at Anfield, an awful display at White Hart Lane, another shocking defeat at Chelsea, just so predictable for Arsenal. To be fair to Wenger, towards the end of the season they put on a really good run of performances, some great wins and they won their last five games in the Premier League to really put pressure on Liverpool who ended up getting that final place in the Champions League but they really put the pressure on and it was quite impressive. I think their win at Stoke 4-1 was very unlike Arsenal and then obviously the FA Cup final winning against Chelsea who had beaten them at Stamford Bridge earlier in the season and had won the Premier League it looked pretty formidable and Arsenal dominated that FA Cup final and I think whether it's decided before that that Wenger was going to stay I don't know but if if it was still in the air, I think that performance was worthy of Wenger keeping his job as far as you know, the board were concerned and anybody else who was involved in making that decision. I, for one, you know, as an opposition fan, am delighted to see Wenger stay on. And that's not disrespect him. I think he's a phenomenal manager. I think he's done a great job at Arsenal over the years, but I don't fear Arsenal under Arsene Wenger in the way I did 10 years ago. I see them as a team that are going to do well in the Cups. They're going to be in and around the top six, they're usually a top four, but nowadays, you know, they're out of that. So who knows? Who knows how far they're going to fall now? Who knows what sort of player they're going to be able to attract in the summer? So Arsene Wenger, for me, gets a C+. Fair play for winning the FA Cup. That's great for him, great for Arsenal to win another trophy. But to drop out of the Champions League uh, is unacceptable. 
Okay, so fourth place was Liverpool under Jurgen Klopp, his first full season in charge at Anfield, his first summer transfer window. He really got to put a marker on his squad. He signed Sadio Mane, he signed Jorginho Vinal, and we brought in Ragnar Klavan, Loris Karius, a number of other players to really fill out the squad. There's a lot of squad depth needed at Liverpool, and the, the fact is, there still is a lot of squad depth needed. I don't know how they've managed to sign those players and still be so light. Around January and February, when Mane was away, Coutinho was injured, Daniel Sturridge couldn't find any fitness, Adam Alana was out for a large part of it. Liverpool really struggled for depth. Of course you're going to get injuries, but I felt they should have maybe had more to, to cover for that. Especially if they had the January window, they were looking at the likes of Julian Brandt, didn't get him in. A number of other players, Christian Pulisic they almost brought in. Klopp opted to stick with what he had. That meant chances for Ben Woodburn, Trent Alexander-Arnold, got a game out of Trafford on his debut. Some really surprising team selections, but that's what he was forced into. And to finish in the top four with that squad, I do think is a good achievement. But from where Liverpool were from August to the end of November, early December, they looked like real title challenges. Coutinho was in fine form. Lallana was in the team of the season for the first half of the campaign. Sadio Mane was just looking to be an unreal signing. And Liverpool really were knocking on the door. They were top for a while. And that defeat of Bournemouth, and they followed that up with a draw against West Ham. And in January, it all just fell apart. You know, they went out of the League Cup, the FA Cup. They drew at Sunderland. They went on to, to lose at Hull and Leicester in February. And then people were starting to write them off for top four. But to be fair to Jürgen Klopp, to be fair to Liverpool, they really dug in towards the end of the season. Some great away wins at Stoke, which looked so unlikely when they went a goal behind. West Brom at Charbin, they got a 1-0. Very unlikely Liverpool to go to West Brom and win. At Watford, they ground out a 1-0. And then they got the job done on the final day so to finish fourth for Liverpool I think most fans would have taken out the start of the season disappointing to go out against Wolves in the FA Cup disappointing to lose to Southampton in the semi-final of the League Cup still no silverware for Liverpool since 2012 which Klopp will probably have to address this season if not next uh, if he's going to keep Liverpool fans happy but to finish in top four for Jurgen Klopp I see it as a decent achievement something that many managers have failed to do uh, over the past seven or eight years for the Reds so for Klopp to get into that top four, look like he's really improved his Liverpool side to get a lot more points than last season. Looks like they're building something quite special. I'm going to give Jurgen Klopp a B for 16-17. Okay, third place this season was Manchester City, the team that started with six successive wins under Pep Guardiola. And were playing some really astonishing football until they went to White Hart Lane and lost 2-0. And that was really where their momentum stopped. They got a couple of draws after that and they never really managed to regain any sort of momentum until later on in the campaign. Around February they started to turn it on again, but they went out of the Champions League at the hands of Monaco. And they went out of the League Cup early to Manchester United. They missed out on an FA Cup final by losing to Arsenal, who at the time were in a terrible run of form. So I think it's been a... A real on and off campaign for Guardiola. It's no mean feat getting into the top four, but with the squad that they've got and the signings that they've made, his reputation as this great you know, continental manager who is going to come into the Premier League and take it by storm hasn't really done that straight away. And I think next season is going to be the real test. Claudio Bravo came in for 15 million and completely flopped. It looks like they're going to replace him already. John Stones came in, had a decent season, didn't really set the world alight. I think there are players in the same position that were bought for much less that ended up probably having a better campaign. Leroy Sané took a while to get going but ended up being a quality signing. He looks like he's going to be a real star in the Premier League. And then Gabriel Jesus who came in in January and already looks like he's dethroned Aguero at Man City and looks like he's going to be the real focal point of their attack. It's an okay season for Guardiola but I don't think he'll be over the moon with how it panned out. Third place is just below par. I think they were favourites before the season and they will be favourites going into next season, especially having already signed Bernardo Silva and it looks like they're going to get Edison as well and they could get anybody else. They've, they mean business, they've released a lot of players early, a lot of the old guard who, you know, Zabaleta, Clichy, Sanya, no longer with Man City, they're obviously going to replace those. Maybe the likes of Carl Walker and Mendy are going to come in there. So their squad is going to be significantly improved. Their fans will be really expecting a proper push at the title this season because it's been a couple of years that they've really under-delivered. So I think it's very important for them that they can mount a proper title charge this season. Uh, and Pep Guardiola will need to do that if he's going to keep the City owners happy. So Pep gets a C for his first season, a disappointing one, but one I'm sure they can build on. And with the signings they're going to make, I'm pretty confident that they're going to better that next season. Okay, second place this season, Tottenham Hotspur under Mauricio Pochettino. I think we'd all agree that they have overachieved in the league again. I think with that squad, with the resources they've got, to get 86 points in the Premier League is very impressive. To have Harry Kane out for so long, 
and to still stay in the title race for such a long time and really push Chelsea down to the wire like they did. But when Harry Kane was fit, Spurs were just irresistible. And then Son Heung Min came in and played really well. Eriksen perhaps had his best season in a Spurs shirt. Deli Alley really came of age. Defensively, they were so solid again. They were just an immovable object at times during the Premier League season. In Europe, it was a different conversation. I'm not sure whether Wembley's going to be favourable towards them next season. Obviously, they've got to play all their league games there. So for them to have to move from my hot lane, which was such a fortress for them this season, might be tough, but they've overcome so much in recent years, you know, selling Bale, Modric, and for them to still come out the other side and be strong, where other sides who have had to sell their best players like Liverpool have struggled, it's really admirable. And for them to be able to keep hold of so many of their key players, and they all seem very happy there, the likes of Kane, Eriksen, Ali, who have been linked with moves to like Real Madrid and Manchester United, with really appetising moves. They all seem very happy in the Pochettino, they're all signing new deals. The only exception is Carl Walker, who looks like he will be moved on, but Trippier came in, second half of the season looked really good. So I don't think there's going to be many concerns there. Not really sure what to expect from Spurs going forward transfer-wise. I think Sissoko was a big mistake. One of Pochettino's biggest mistakes was bringing him in for 30 million. Never really lived up to his price tag. He was a big disappointment, as was Vincent Janssen, who never really got off the mark properly at Spurs. But they, they seem to like him down there for his work rate, so maybe he's still got another season in him. But for Tottenham to get 86 points, which in a lot of seasons would win them the league, and to push Chelsea that close, and to be so good at home, and to have Harry Kane fit and firing, and to have that system really locked down with the three at the back and be able to play four at the back as they did against Arsenal and be adaptable. You can't praise Pochettino highly enough. He's still not won the trophy at Tottenham, which is what will be the stick that opposition fans have beat him with. But I still think you have to admire how this squad, which has the sixth highest wage bill in the country, managed to finish second and were easily the second best team in the country and at times were the best, but weren't quite good enough to topple Chelsea in the end. So Pochettino for me gets an A-, minus. you may think that's high seeing as how they flopped in Europe but that league performance, despite not really strengthening that well in the summer, to have Harry Kane injured for so long early on in the season, to still hang in there, to lose only four games in the league campaign, to finish second, he gets an A-. minus. And of course the champions Chelsea who were just uncatchable from autumn onwards really in the Premier League. Antonio Conte came in, made his signings, he brought Kante in, he knew who he wanted. Brought in Marcos Alonso who many thought was a crazy signing considering he wasn't that great in the Premier League beforehand. David Luiz who wasn't highly rated himself but seems to resurrect his career at PSG and he's been outstanding for Chelsea this term. And Batshuari who didn't get on the pitch much but when he did he scored the goal that scored the title so all in all the transfer business was pretty perfect. Their start to the season though was far from perfect. They lost at home to Liverpool and then got thrashed 3-0 by Arsenal but then that of course sparked a tactical change to three at the back and that was the change that won Chelsea the league in the end. It's a, it was a genius switch, one that may look easy on paper but it really did take some bottle from Conte to do something that Chelsea haven't done in a while. And the run they went on after that was just sensational. They smashed Manchester United 4-0. This is a Manchester United side that would turn up in these big away games and sit in. They beat them 4-0. They beat Spurs. They beat Everton 5-0. You know, a decent Everton side. And then that was the run that really captured the title for them. They they breezed through the rest of the season, had a couple of hiccups, they lost against Manchester United and they lost at home to Palace, which they shouldn't have done. But other than that, it was never really in doubt as much as we wished it was, you know, as a neutral. But fair play to Conte, he came in and couldn't really have done any better in the league. Obviously no Europe was a big help for them, something that they won't have next season, so it'll be interesting to see how he manages there. The biggest disappointment will be the FA Cup final performance. It would have been the perfect way to cap off the campaign, to, to seal that league and cup double, which their dominance over the course of the season would have merited, but they put in a really limp display against Arsenal in the FA Cup final, really gifted the cup to them. And Victor Moses was stupid and getting sent off, so they just didn't look quite there. I don't know if it was a natural thing, having already won the league two weeks prior and sort of dropping off. It, it happens. But he will take that forward, I'm sure. He'll learn from that and he'll know that next season they need to not switch off in any games because at Chelsea, you do get judged on how many trophies you win. Even even one trophy might not be enough, as we've seen with the likes of Ancelotti and other managers that have been sacked. There's not much patience at Chelsea, so Conte needs to build on this season. He needs to be mounting another title challenge. He probably needs to be winning the league again next season. I'm sure they're going to strengthen, but he needs to be doing well in the Champions League as well, something Chelsea won in 2012. He'll, he'll want to get his hands on that trophy, and he'll also want to be successful in the other domestic cups 
going to be so competitive next season. For Antonio Conte, I think he has to get an A for this season. Would have been A+, plus, but the FA Cup final display was very disappointing. Definitely the manager of the season. Definitely a, a fantastic appointment from Chelsea. He really couldn't have asked for much more. So thanks for watching, guys. That was my grading of the top six managers in the Premier League for last season. Please do subscribe. It would really mean a lot. And if you could drop a like, leave a comment, and share the video as well, that would be awesome. Also, follow me on my other socials. It's Ben Might Say on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. And I'll see you next time.